Still tracking some thunderstorms out there with some heavy downpours associated with them, and they will continue, it looks like, over the next day or so. We'll track all of them for you coming up. The search for a missing teenager is over after investigators found her body today along a rural southern Kentucky road. What they believe led up to her death coming up. And deputies in Laurel County are looking for a five-year-old who was taken early this morning by his mother. Why deputies are worried about the child's safety. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. That stormy weather we've seen the past few days continues tonight. Good evening. I'm Sean Moody in for Kristen Kennedy. More showers are moving across the state and they are packing some heavy rain, which is why our WKYT first alert severe weather day continues tonight. We begin with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. That's absolutely right, Sean. And what we have is these pockets of very intense rain with some of the thunderstorms that are moving uh, through the area out there this evening. So when you run into some of those, yeah, with the saturated ground that we've experienced here recently from the other heavy rains and other flash flood situations, we have a heightened concern for maybe more high water. So that's why we have First Alert Severe Weather Day out. And as we look at one of the thunderstorms now sweeping into Nicholas County and right over top of Owingsville as well, you can see there and along Interstate 64, you can see why. Pockets of heavy rain, some lightning, some thunder. So you folks out there are certainly hearing it and experiencing it at this moment. We look into parts of Clark County and we're also seeing some of those pockets of heavy rain. Not as much in the way of lightning, though an occasional clap of thunder is certainly a possibility out of these, but not intense activity. A little stronger, though, just out to our west as we've got another that will be rolling into our area here and getting deeper into central Kentucky over the next little bit. And it has more heavy rain as well associated with it. And you can see some of the lightning rolling along. We will continue tracking these, and I'll give you the hour by hour forecast tracking these showers and storms through the area coming up in just a few minutes, Sean. All right, Jim, thank you. The body of a teenage girl reported missing earlier this week has been found in southern Kentucky. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says 16 year old Kaylee Lockerbie was last seen Tuesday morning. Her body was found Friday in Whitley County. Investigators have not yet said how she died. Right now, the sheriff says they're handling the case as a death investigation. WKYT's Caitlin Center talked to the sheriff. That's our top story. Just three days after she was last seen, police say they found Kaylee Lockerbie's body in Whitley County just off Bee Creek Road. It's a very rural area near Laurel Lake. Police began searching for the 16 year old after her foster parent reported her missing. The last she was seen was around 4 30 in the morning Tuesday. But police believe she may have been accompanied by a 21 year old from either Corbin or Barberville. It wasn't long before police put out an arrest warrant for Skylar Barnett of Corbin. The 21 year old is behind bars this evening, charged with unlawful transaction of a minor, possession of heroin, and possession of drug paraphernalia. We don't know how she died yet. It had been partially decomposed. It is kind of a shocker for an individual, even though you are a police officer, to walk on something, someone that is in this state. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office continues to investigate. In Whitley County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Lockerbie's body has been sent to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Skylar Barnett did not want to talk to us from jail. Deputies have not charged him with murder at this time. The search is on tonight for a missing five year old boy in Laurel County. Deputies there tell us little Braden Epperson is with his biological mother, 31 year old Jamie Allen. They say she took off from a home off Sally's Branch Road with Braden around 3 o'clock this morning. When she was driving away, deputies say she almost hit one of their officers. WKYT Sabira Rayford talked with that deputy. I'm here on Sally's Branch Road in Laurel County, where police say early this morning a woman fled from them with her five year old son in the car. Sergeant Larry Parrott tells us he responded to a call on Sally's Branch Road around 3 a.m. He says the owner of the home called asking for 31 year old Jamie Allen to be removed from the home. Parrott says after his arrival, he talked to Allen's 20 year old boyfriend, Dustin Morgan, who told police she was not at the home. That is when they said Allen fled from the home in her car, almost hitting Parrott. Police chased Allen but lost her and later arrested Morgan on hindering apprehension charges and resisting arrest. Parrott says right now they are focused on finding her five year old son. 
that's our main concern is to find the child and get the child uh, you know to the to the grandparents into a safe environment um, secondary to get her arrested and charged um, we found her car early this morning at about 5:30. we were able to find to locate the car uh, at a residence on 472 which is uh, six to seven miles away from where the uh, offense occurred Anyone with information on the location of the child is encouraged to call the Laurel County Sheriff's Office. In Laurel County, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. Sergeant Parrott says he's talked with family members and they're asking for a safe return of the child. They say he has mild ADHD and needs his medication. We're tracking a developing story out of Clay County tonight. The sheriff there says they've caught a man wanted for several violent thefts across multiple counties. Timothy Lawson was taken into custody this afternoon. Deputies have been searching for him for the past few weeks. It all started with a probation violation. Now, during this week's long search, investigators say Lawson stole nearly a dozen cars in Clay, Owsley, Perry, and Leslie counties. Lawson was just booked into the jail about an hour ago. He faces several charges, including robbery, kidnapping, and wanton endangerment. We'll have more on this story coming up on WKYT News at 11. Also new tonight, Kentucky State Police have arrested a fourth person in connection with a double murder that happened back in June. 24-year-old Devontae Hall of Dayton, Ohio, is charged with murder for the deaths of Brandy Davidson and Devin Payton. A fisherman found Payton's body along the water underneath the Slate Creek Bridge in Montgomery County back on June 4th. Then, on June 5th, Davidson's body was found near a cabin in Wolf County. Three other people have also been charged in this case. Troopers say those three people and Hall were at a cabin in Wolf County with two other men when a fight broke out and one of the men was shot. In Fleming County tonight, Kentucky State Police are investigating a crash that killed two people overnight. Troopers say two vehicles collided head-on along Kentucky 11 near Sherburne. 23-year-old Shane Day and 40-year-old Robin Willoughby were both pronounced dead there at the scene. A passenger in Willoughby's car was taken to UK hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Troopers have not said what caused the crash. Crews in Madison County are cleaning up today after last night's flash flooding. The rescue squad says high water washed away part of Crutcher Pike near Richmond. WKYT's Mike Byer got a closer look at that damage today. Parts of Madison County were hit very hard by yesterday's flash flood. This is the aftermath. The road is is in pieces. There's sheets of the, the pavement that were just taken and shoved off to the side of the road. Jim Harmon lives off Crutcher Pike in rural Richmond, one of the areas hardest hit. <laughs> there, the flood destroyed parts of the road, swept a vehicle away, and stranded one of Harmon's neighbors. There was a man that stayed in his house up here. So we're very thankful that it didn't rise up enough to, to take him away. The water from this creek rose so high from last night's flash flood that it almost swept this bridge away. The water was actually flowing completely over the bridge. We were just praying that uh, it wouldn't be taken out. We're just thankful to the Lord that wasn't. The Maple Grove Road Bridge is still standing, but is in bad shape. Right now, we're telling people to not cross this bridge. There's another access off of Barnes Mill that they can use. Kelly McBride works with emergency management. She's busy today surveying damage and is thankful no injuries have been reported. We keep preaching, turn around, don't drown. Now, that's not just a nice little phrase or a nice little rhyme. It's good advice. The creeks have gone back down for now, but even the slightest amount of rain could cause them to rise again. Well, obviously it's a concern. Just take it to the Lord in prayer, I guess. That's all we can do. In Madison County, Mike Byer, WKYT. The Madison County Judge Executive is working on getting the state to reimburse them for the money they'll spend cleaning up all that damage. Happening right now in Lexington, if you've driven down Richmond Road, you may have spotted some police officers at the Krispy Kreme shop. Officers from across central Kentucky are up there on the roof right now. It's all part of the annual Cops on Donut Shops fundraiser. All the money raised today will go to the Special Olympics for Kentucky. They have great fun with this. I mean, we've had an officer pull up with a motorcycle from the UK Police Department. Uh, we've got them on top. We have police officers in the back. I mean, several different agencies are represented today. Those officers will be out there until 11 o'clock tonight. Today's fundraiser supports the organization's year-round athletic competitions and sporting events.
Still to come here on WKYT News, kids across the bluegrass will be going back to school soon. How a couple of organizations are making sure they're prepared. We are under a first alert severe weather day again as we are tracking showers and thunderstorms. Heavy downpours associated with some of this and the fact that the ground is so saturated. You've walked out, it's almost like soupy because there's so much water in the ground. You've seen it. That's the reason why, because you get under any of these heavy downpours and you can run into some flash flood issues again. So we're going to keep an eye on things a little closer than normal with our first alert severe weather day. What we're tracking out there right now along Interstate 64 is another good little shower thunderstorm that has now exited parts of Nicholas County, but it's still right over Owingsville and most of the lightning showing up north of Owingsville at this point. We go a little more toward the uh, south and west, southern parts of Clark County. Getting in on some heavy rain, and that is also making a transition along the Mountain Parkway uh, into Powell County. Let's move toward the east. This is the next round that likely cruises through central Kentucky here within the next few hours, just the south there of uh, Taylorsville, and then down the Bluegrass Parkway. Same setup as we had with the first round that entered Lexington. Wasn't quite as heavy or as intense as it originally looked, but it started to weaken once it got into town. But the point is, we just keep seeing the rounds of rain. We do have a little bit of shower activity still showing up here, close to Lexington as well, and into Woodford County. Very light rain falling, and you can see it. Off in the distance, I've got our camera facing uh, off toward the west, and you can see those showers showing up out there. And with the sun behind them, it makes it a little bit uh, better, a little more visible, at least you can see. Here's what we've got currently in Lexington 76 degrees. 76 degrees, that's fantastic. The problem is we had showers to get us to that point, but we're at 76, and that is a nice temperature. The problem is we've got humidity also involved as well. Over the weekend, still tracking the possibility of showers and thunderstorms. It was a severe impact for us. The, the highest threat that we run into is flooding, and it's more of a flash flood threat, not just a widespread, nonstop kind of deal. Flash flooding possible throughout the weekend. So we got this front just hanging out. Everything south of it is very uh, moist. We've got a lot of moisture in the air, which will be enhanced by that front, giving us chances of showers and thunderstorms. Hour by hour run, let me take you into the future. You'll see the scattered showers and storms dying out here this evening, but once that front starts to sink its teeth in tomorrow, we start firing them off again into the afternoon and evening. Here's our seven day forecast. More rounds of thunderstorms uh, come into play tomorrow, and we'll keep a chance alive almost every single day in that seven day forecast. Uh, next week, though, the heat comes back. Yeah, you know, you look at those temperatures, and it's like, boy, it's just been so chilly, right? Oh, yeah, so <laughs> cool out there. 76 feels good right yeah, now. Yeah, we'll take it. Boy. A little bit of sarcasm there. Yeah, a, little, bit. a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. July is almost over, which means it's almost time for students to head back to school. Today, there were several back to school rallies all over Lexington to get the kids ready. Michelle Chamberlain shows us how they're getting all set. Yeah, it is that time of year again. It's time for kids to go back to school. And these back to school rallies, like the one here at Douglas Park, help to provide thousands of kids in Lexington with school supplies. The YMCA of Central Kentucky, along with Fayette County Public Schools, held back to school rallies today in 15 different neighborhood locations across the city. The rallies are a fun way for the community to get together and celebrate the back to school season. The rallies also provide more than 7,000 kids with free school supplies and backpacks. I think it's very important to help uh, parents that can't afford it to be able to get a start where you can feel overwhelmed and you're not overwhelmed because you are getting some things free. School supplies weren't the only resources provided today. In Fayette County, incoming kindergartners are required to have their vision checked. So with that in mind, vision tests were provided today for the kids. Because a lot of our children, when they begin school, they're not really realizing that they're having a hard time seeing when it comes to learning. So we figure why not um, have the kids come on and get a vision screening early and so we can see if there is an issue and we can address it. And another great benefit from this rally, if they find out those kids who take the vision test are in need of glasses, they will provide those glasses for free. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Now, the first day of school here in Fayette County is August 10th. For a list of school start dates for several other counties across the region, just head on over to WKYT.com. Lee Kay is in next with sports, and the UK football team is getting ready for the season behind quarterback Drew Barker. They are, Sean, and a lot is expected from Barker this season, and his quarterback's coach has an update on his progress. And a familiar face was back on UK's campus today. We hear from Devin Booker next in sports.
UK fan favorite Devin Booker is back in the bluegrass this weekend, helping kids with their shooting stroke at the John Calipari shooting camp. Booker and UK freshman Malik Monk among players helping out at the camp this morning. Booker just completed an all rookie season with the Phoenix Suns in which he averaged 14 points a game. He says his breakout year may have a lasting impact on his career. I think this rookie year is going to shape the rest of my career in a positive way because I don't think, you know, ever be like that again where, you know, a 19 year old has the ball in the game, ball in his hands the whole game. So, but, you know, like I said, you know, it was good for me. You know, I got to deal with the pressure of being that main target. So, you know, hopefully down the line, I'm still going to have that same attention on me. And for the first time today, we got a look at the freshman class together on the court, also helping out at the camp. Booker said that he likes what he sees so far from this new litter of cats. They look like they're going to be really special, this team. Uh, also with Bam, I think defensively they should be you know, one of Cal's best teams. You know, they have the length, they have the athleticism. So, you know, I, don't th I think it's going to be real interesting. It's going to be real fun because I think it's going to be more fast-paced, a lot of dunks with how athletic they are. It'll be a busy week for Drew Barker and his football Wildcat teammates. They report to campus on Thursday. Media day is Friday and fan day is Saturday. Barker will be the starting quarterback heading into fall camp. He started the final two games of the season and held on to the job in spring practice. New UK quarterbacks coach Darren Henshaw says Barker has all the intangibles to be successful. Number one thing with a quarterback position is you got to have a good motion. You got to be able to throw the ball accurately. Um, and he does that very, very well. He does. He's strong. He's powerful. Um, he can run the football, and we are going to run him. So we're going to do some things with that with all our quarterbacks. But his, uh, his accuracy is one of his best traits. As we continue to count you down to the start of the U.K. football season, today 35 days away. That's right, the number 35 worn by Harold Dennis and Derek Smith. 35 also the number of points scored by Kentucky against the Newcastle Athletic Club in 1898 when the team called the Immortals wrapped up a 7-0 season, all shutouts. And in 2014, Austin McGinnis booted a 35-yard field goal as time expired in the first half against the Florida Gators. UK would force overtime in the Swamp. You can go to WKYT.com to see all of those countdown days. We are less than three weeks away from the start of the high school football season, and as always, expectations are high in Scott County. The Cardinals are the subject of tonight's 27 teams in 27 days. At Scott County, the Cardinals don't rebuild, they reload, and Coach Jim McKee didn't have to look very far to find talent. We have some good players. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. You know, we're fortunate. We've got two guys on our offensive line that have offers already. Uh, so, you know, we've got some big, strong cats up there, and we've got some guys who can run the ball, quarterback's back. Josh Davis is back at quarterback running the wing tee, while Kendrick Hamilton takes on an even bigger role running the football. We're going to have a strong offense. We've got some good blockers. we got Glenn, a great wide receiver. And our quarterback's going to step it up this year. Pride and tradition runs deep in Scott County. And a year ago, McKee compared his team to the Dallas Cowboys. He maintains that analogy with one minor alteration. First off, I should have picked somebody else because Dallas doesn't win enough. But that's not what the point is. You know, the point is that when we prepare and take the field, we, we want it to mean the same to our guys that it means to the guys at Alabama, the guys at Tennessee, the guys at Kentucky, the guys at the Pittsburgh Steelers, the guys wherever. And the Cardinals enjoy having those lofty expectations of winning. Well, we were 11 and 2 last year. We lost at Cincinnati Elder and in the regional finals to Lafayette 36-30 and you know, it was almost kind of like mm, yeah, 11 and 2. Motivation shouldn't be hard to come by. We are plenty motiv motivated with uh, Everything going on happened last year and even the year before that. We're just ready to rock and roll this year. And at the PGA Championship today, play is suspended because of heavy rain in the New York City area. So play is scheduled to resume tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. So the leaderboard looks the exact same as it did yesterday after the second round. The leaders actually never got off the course today. Jimmy Walker and Robert Streb are tied with a two-shot lead. So it's going to be an early start to the third round of the PGA Championship, Sean, tomorrow morning. Uh, and then they'll hopefully get it all in tomorrow. If not, they may push back the, the finish to the PGA Championship to Monday. Rain just causing trouble everywhere. I know. Yeah. And they can't blame Jim Caldwell. I don't think he called for it up in New York. Yeah. Oh, well. You can always try. We'll be right back with more WKYT News in just a moment.
Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $478 million. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot, $25 million. Can't use any of that money to keep the rain away, though, huh? Uh, unfortunately not. I would like to have all of that money, sure. personally, myself. Uh, shower thunderstorms are working through the area right now. We're still under a first alert severe weather day, and the reason is we've got these little heavy soaking rains that are passing through saturated ground, so we're going to continue to watch out for maybe some isolated flash flooding, guys. All right, thanks for joining us. Our next newscast is at 11, and remember the news is always on at WKYT.com.